Technical Bulletin 55. My name's Alan Hart and today I'm back at uh, National Gas Centre for Excellence and I'm with Michael and Michael's going to go through the Technical Bulletin 55 and the duties, duties of landlords and whether or not we need to do a tightness test when we go do a landlord check. Um, so yeah, do you do a tightness test? Do you do a service? Please put a comment below, let me know, let me know what you, what you do. And um, what we'll do now, we'll go over to Michael and he can tell us what the actual, what the technical bulletin actually says that we need to do. Hi everyone. Uh, we've been asked a little bit about um, the requirements for engineers when carrying out landlord gas safety certificates. Now, LGSRs um, are a bit of a minefield. Some people think that we have to do a service. Some people think we have to do tightness testing. Um, so today is really just a video about trying to clarify you know, what, is, what is first of all expected of you by gas safe on a landlord gas safety check and um, what you're legally required to do. And then also what you, know, what you can, what, what are the duties of a landlord? What, what, what upsells can you, can you make on the back of it? Or what are the things a landlord's expected to do that fall outside of the scope of a landlord gas safety check? So there's a really useful document called Technical Bulletin 55. Um, it's on the Gas Safe, Regist um, gas Safe um, Registers website. So, you know, using your, your gas card, you can log in, you can see Technical Bulletin 55. It's just a technical bulletin, just like any other. And, but it relates specifically to the duties of a landlord um, and also, you know, the duties of an engineer when conducting a landlord gas safety check. It's a bit, again, it's a bit of a minefield and it's also quite a, a controversial subject. You know, some engineers will say, well, you need to do a tightness test because of this or that. And so it, it is just about clarifying, first of all, the diff definition between what you're required to do by law and what you, what, you know, best practice. So you can find where you sit in between the lines. So technical bulletin 55, I've put it on the board as well. So um, it's, it's worthwhile, you know, having a look at this document and reading it up. It's only three pages long, four pages long. So, um, and we're just gonna pick out some really high level facts from it. So the first thing I wanna talk about is um, question two. So question two is um, in relation to what equipment is covered by the landlord's duties. And what it says, and again, I'm paraphrasing here, as far as flues are concerned, the duties extend to any flue which serves any relevant gas fitting the definition of a relevant gas fitting excludes any appliance which the tenant owns and that is that the tenant is entitled to remove from the relevant premises when the tenant moves out. So what that's saying is that ultimately the landlord gas safety certificate is only checking the, the landlord's own appliances. It's not checking the tenant's appliances. Um, you can, if you want to list the tenant's appliances, you can do that. Um, you're only, you're only, if, you, if you do that, you only have to carry out a visual inspection on them, that's it. Um, it goes on to, answer two goes on to state that flues serving a tenant's own appliance are not covered. Um, however, landlords have a duty of care under the Health and Safety at Work Act 1974, which again relates to workplaces and also places where somebody has a, a responsibility for the people on that site or in that premises, um, which covers a wider range of duties such as the fabric of the building. So what the saying there is that if you've got a gas fire that's into a brick chimney, then that chimney isn't necessarily covered by the gas regs. However, it is covered by the, the landlord's further duties, the wider duties, i.e. looking after the fabric of the building. So it goes on to say that the HSC is advised that the extent of these duties will be for a court to decide but it seems likely that they would take the view that any chimney should be maintained in a condition so as it, so as to be fit for purpose. So what that's saying again is that you might have a, a, a landlord, sorry, a tenant's appliance going into a chimney, and you, although you're not necessarily required under uh, the gas regs to check that chimney, you are, you know, you should really make sure that the chimney is fit for purpose. So that's a bit of a grey area, isn't it? So. This way, this way we get a definition between the landlord's duties. The landlord's got two duties. The first duty is to ensure that every appliance that they ha have in that property for use by the tenant is safe for use. So all that means is that you've every year they've got to have a safety certificate, a landlord gas safety certificate carried out, which basically lists the 26.9 checks. Now, 
26.9 checks are just a check for safety. So we check the, the flu, that it's performing as it should. We check the um, ventilation for, the, prop, for the, the appliance. We check the gas for, to the appliance. So we make sure that it's got, we can either gas rate it or take a burner pressure to ensure that it's burning the correct amount of gas. And then we check the safety devices and a visual inspection. That, that's pretty much what our 26.9 checks you know, incorporate. That's the first duty of the landlord. The second duty of the landlord, and it's a separate duty, is for ongoing effective maintenance. And ongoing effective maintenance, if I read the, read the definition to you, is there should also be an, eff an effective maintenance of appliance owned by the landlord, which is an ongoing program of regular inspections, for example, servicing. This would be a full service of all landlord's appliances, along with visual inspection of the rest of the installation and a gas tightness test. So we've got separation between the two. The first duty is that all the appliances are checked for safety, 26.9 checks. The next thing that a landlord has to do is provide ongoing effective maintenance, but that doesn't have to be on a landlord's gas safety check. That can be in addition to it. So um, for example, when I'm asked to do a landlord gas safety check, I also ask the question, do you want me to carry out a tightness test? Do you want me to service the appliance? And I make sure that I get that information and I charge for it. Um, the reason why is because, first of all, it's an, it's an additional requirement to a landlord safety check. So, um, and it, it helps the landlord. If I, if I specify the difference between the two, the landlord has the, the, the option to say to me, no, actually, I don't want you to do that. If the landlord doesn't want me to do that, I will put in the document, in, in the invoice generally, landlord gas safety check with, with no tightness test and no, um, no, visual, uh, no ongoing maintenance. Um, so, and that allows you as an engineer to, to, to not hold responsibility for something that you're not getting paid for. So just to summarize, um, the, the, the requirements on a landlord, safety inspection on all appliances that are theirs. Um, if the, the, the tenant has their own fire that's connected to the landlord's flu, realistically, I would be suggesting to the landlord that you do carry out at least a flu flow test by, and also a, I will be pushing for you know to, to include the the tenant's appliance in there in that in that in, in the inspection and the second thing is ongoing effective maintenance it is not a requirement of a gas safety check to carry out a tightness test or to carry out a service they're all additional requirements of a landlord more, more diligent landlords will suggest that we'll get the ongoing effective maintenance and the landlord gas safety check done in the same visit but it's not a requirement of you as an engineer during uh, the landlord gas safety check. So I hope that was of some use and it, you know, it allowed us to, it, 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 it sort of defined the process a bit easier for you and made it easier to understand. If there's anything that we can, uh, any more further videos that you want us to do, by all means, let us know, uh, comment in this video if needs be, and we'll look to get them done for you. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much for that, Michael. Very interesting as always. Um, as I say, with the bulletin, click on to Gas Safe, look at the bulletin yourself, read it yourself, understand it yourself, and know what you know what you are required to do, and then take it from there. Really, um, please put a comment below. Let me know. Do you do a tightness test when you go do a landlord check, or even when you go do a boiler service? Do you do a tightness test? It's it's a question that's asked quite a lot and in, in the groups a lot of people argue about it so it'd be interesting from a point of view from a gas engineer but it'll also be interesting from a customer's point of view so if you had an actual customer would you expect your gas engineer to come out when he comes out would you expect him to do a tightness test so that's testing the gas to make sure you've got no gas leaks so it'll be interesting to see what the uh, what customers think to that as well um, but yeah Please put a comment below, let me know, let me know which, what, you, what you do and whether you think you know, the requirements should be different as well, maybe. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.